topic of my talk is China is a threat of the world. And we think that I will talk about the Chinese invasion of Southeast Asia. We will, I will be talking about five different topics. Threat to USA and Europe, threat to South Asia, to Asia, to Africa, to Latin America. And at the beginning, at, at the end, I will have the conclusion. Also causes problems to the AC system, the heater system in the US. Even now, every year, there are 100,000 homes in the US. We suffer that, and we cause a lot of problems. That is so obvious to, to us. And for example, intellectual property. An example is Google. Years ago, China forced Google to move some of the operation to China. And as a result, the Chinese businesses in conclusion, collusion with the Chinese government stole, hacked into Google system. They stole codes, secrets. And the net result of that is nowadays, the Chinese equivalent to Google has 65% of the market in China, 65%. Okay, and they got that through their of IPs from Google. That is just one of many examples again. Of course, they pollute the environment with toxic and other dangerous products. There are tons of tons of evidence. You can go on Google, Facebook, Wikipedia, and the media, and they all have tons of examples about that. Illegal currency manipulation too. They undervalue their currency yuan purposely in order to have cheap products okay, exporting to other countries, to all over the world. Again, the counterfeit and pirate the IP and commercial products. And as a result of that, as a result of all of these unfair, illegal uh, practices, we owe them more than three trillion dollars. More than three trillion dollars. And it keeps increasing. And they conduct aggressive economic, military, political espionage against the US and Europe. If you read the book by Peter Navarro, Death by China. This is just a few of the examples in the book. Death by China has many, many, many more examples of what China is doing to us, to us in this country and Europe. And the quote that I have here, China is the only nation in the world preparing to kill America. That is a quote from Peter Navarro. The book Death by China has been made into a, an award-winning documentary film. Together with the book Death by China, you should look into the documentary Crouching Tiger, which exposes various insidious plans and action of China preparing to destroy us. We want to make the American people and the American go government to be aware of the serious situation with China. Russia is not our number one enemy anymore. China is. We have pretty much box in Russia. There's nothing much that Putin can do. But there's a lot that China has been doing, is doing, and will be doing against us. Now, the threat to Southeast Asia. In March of this year, 
I went back to my old to my old country Vietnam. That trip was an eye opener for me. Before the trip, I had hoped that the Vietnamese communist leaders would imitate the generals from Myanmar, from Burma. You remember many years ago, the generals who formed the government of Myanmar was very, very much pro-Chinese. But after a few years of dealing with them, they saw through the scheme to conquer, dominate Burma. So they have changed the government and now the Myanmar government is spread pretty much pro-Western, pro-America. For Vietnam, it's too late. In 1990, the Chinese Communist leaders convoked the Vietnamese Communist leaders to the, to the Chinese city called Chengdu. In that city, both communist nations signed a treaty, an agreement called the Chengdu Agreement. What that agreement effectively does is to annex Vietnam gradually over the years with a table. Eventually, Vietnam will be just a small province of China with a governor from China, from Communist China, just like 2000 years ago. Effectively, the Vietnamese Communist Party has sold Vietnam to Communist China. And Communist China will annex Vietnam without firing a shot. Shame on the Vietnamese Communist Party. In our illustrious history, in the Vietnam, Vietnamese history, our people were never cowardly. When I went back to Vietnam in March, I talked to a lot of taxi drivers, restaurant staff, hotel staff, friends, relatives. Sometimes I talk to people on the street. All of them, all of the people I talked to, and I talked to many of them, I was there for three weeks. All of them were very upset with the Vietnamese Communist Party. But they feel they will, by themselves, they cannot do anything. I visited three, four cities in all, Saigon, Nha Trang, Da Nang Hue. Compared to my previous trip, this time I see a lot of Chinese. Everywhere I went to, I see a lot of Chinese. They are they were very obnoxious. They act as if they have owned Vietnam already. And this is in the Vietnamese territory. The people realized that they were very upset. The Vietnamese Communist Party has no credibility with the Vietnamese people anymore. They have lots of people. Their days are numbered. The current situation is that Laos is practically a vassal of China, Red China. Red China occupies most of Cambodia. Next is Vietnam and then Thailand. I cannot stand still and watch communist China take over my own country. That is why when I came back here during in my Mark Street, I formed a movement, a movement called Việt Hùng, which says that glorify Vietnam again.
I form this movement to support the people in Vietnam who I'm sure will have a struggle against the Chinese domination, the communist chi Chinese domination. This struggle will be long, will be multidimensional, will be long because China is very powerful nowadays and they have insidious plans to conquer not only South Asia but the whole world. It is long, it is multi-generational. I will train the next two generations of Vietnamese, Americans or Vietnamese overseas to continue my work after I'm gone. I know it will take much longer. I will take 25 years, 50 years. But I'm very confident, I'm very sure that by the end, we will be very victorious. We have done that more than 10 times. If you look at Vietnamese history, we do have our fair share of excellent generals. We do have our fair share of war fighters, excellent war fighters too. We have repulsed the invaders from the north more than 10 times in the past. We even defeated the Mongols three times. Three times when the Mongols were inv invincible. They, they never lost a war until they came to Vietnam. Three times. And the third, we had a good king and good general there. Both of them are very famous in our history. And the third time they came, the king turned to the general and they asked, what do you think will happen? And that famous general said, this time it will be very easy. And the king asked, how so? And the general said that, because unlike the first time, our people are not afraid anymore. They have defeated the Mongols twice. They are better trained. They have more discipline. They have confidence. And the third time was really easy. Okay. So, we need your help. We need America's help. Many of you are probably watching the film Vietnam War by Ken Brooks on TV. You will see that is a history of the Vietnam War from Ken Brooks' perspective. Many people say that we Americans were on the wrong side. Okay. We were not on the wrong side. We were on the American side. It's just that we broke up a government, a South Vietnamese government, which didn't have time, enough time, which was not effective in defeating the Vietnamese communists. This time is different. The Vietnamese communists don't have the people anymore. As I mentioned, there is a number. This is our chance, the American chance, the Vietnamese chance to win the Second Vietnam War. And I have no doubt that we will win. It requires the sacrifices of tens of millions of Vietnamese in Vietnam and overseas. And our movement, the movement of Viet Hưng, main goal is to support the people in Vietnam to struggle against the Chinese invaders, the communist Chinese invaders. We need your help. If you can help us, and if America can help the Vietnamese people, not only America will win the Second Vietnam War, but also Vietnam, but also America will show that it upholds the high values of America, the values of human rights, human dignity, freedoms, 
freedom from oppression, freedom from being invaded. All of those are the values that America stands for. And with that, if you support the struggle in Vietnam, the war will respect America much more and America will remain to be the number one power in the world. So, so we need your help. Please help us. These maps show the place where the Chinese have started the invasion of Vietnam. You see there's tons of places. At many of those places, the Chinese are inside. They use Chinese currency. They have Chinese signs. They spoke Chinese. And they have what they call armed locks to prevent the Vietnamese from entering on Vietnamese soil, many places, hometowns, home district, most of the provinces. So they have already invaded Vietnam with the collusion of the Vietnamese Communist Party. That is why the people are very upset with the Vietnamese Communist Party. As I mentioned, the Vietnamese Communist Party days are numbered. If they don't have the people, they have lost everything. The Vietnamese Communist Party may have some land in Vietnam. The Chinese Communist government may have some land in Vietnam. But we, the Vietnamese people, okay, we struggle and kick them out. Eventually, like I say, more than 10 times in the past. So, this is just a reflection of what is going on in Vietnam. Next is the threat to Asia. As we already know, China has already annexed Tibet and the Muslim countries in Western China. Their latest scheme is one bent, one road. I will have a picture of that later on. But that scheme is to enhance and solidify the economic, military and political power of China. For years now, China does not hide the fact that their goal is world domination. If you remember in 1949, when Mao Zedong came to power, they used the name as People's Republic of China at that time. And for years, we hear about People's Republic of China. In the last seven years, you don't hear that anymore. They use an old name called Middle Kingdom. You will hear that more and more often from Communist China. Middle Kingdom means that they are the center. They are the center of the universe. Everything revolves around them. That is the intention. So, so for one bank, one road, or overall, they plan to spend $124 billion dollars and they have started on that already for example they are building a, a train a rain road from Beijing to Bangkok they are building a high-speed train also from uh, China to Thailand in addition to that and then the rain road will go on to Singapore and they have their budget enough to bribe the corrupt leaders in Asia, in Africa, and in Latin America. And of course, you have heard about the new islands in South China Sea. Okay, I will have a picture of that soon. This picture 
was produced by Communist China. Effectively, you see that they claim all of South, of the South China Sea, no matter what. The Philippines took them to the World Court. They lost, and they say we don't recognize the World Court. Okay, and that is it. Yeah. And you see that they even occupy some of the uh, sea. Uh, the beaches in Vietnam. When I was in Vietnam in March, by chance, one day the front page of the largest newspaper there said that of the, on the beach of Vietnam there are about 40 boats which dress the sand. In two months, those boats stretch four million cubic meters of sand for what? to build up the islands that I will show you soon they do things like that they occupy people and then use everything so China intention is to occupy okay, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia all the, all the countries around the South China Sea, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, when they control all those countries, they effectively control the South China Sea. And the South China Sea is very important to America. We will not let them have free reign in the South China Sea. Okay, and that is just one part of the world. So, I have a few pictures of the islands that Communist China is building up in the South China Sea. This is a picture of before and after. On the left you see the island in 2011. On the right you see the same island but expanded in 2015 through the same from Vietnam too. This is another one, the before and after. On the left, there's not much at all. And then on the right, there's an island. Military installation and another island. They build up. You can see that they have military installation. Again, an, another South China Sea island window with boats and so on. This one I like it the best. It shows an airstrip. Okay, they intend to make those South China Sea island a mili military base. And they do have aircraft carrier okay, who will go to those islands and use those islands as military bases to control the South China Sea. And there's no secret about that. Okay. And they are doing that not only in South, in, in Asia, but many other places in the world. This is the boat, the, the small boat in the middle is the communist Vietnam uh, boat and the two other boats are communist China boat. In Vietnam nowadays, okay, if you protest against the Vietnamese communist government, you are put in jail. If you protest against Communist China, you are also put in jail. And this boat illustrate the fight of some Vietnamese against China some time ago. Our fishermen, the, the Vietnamese fishermen, we they went along the coast of Vietnam to fish to make their livelihood. Communist 
China Chinese fishing boat much bigger and arm to the Vietnamese fishing boat would never arm but the communist Chinese boats were fishermen were armed so they bully the threaten our boats and when this Vietnamese government sent the small navy against the Chinese communist boats and China communist China claimed that we are attacking the innocent fishermen and they would send these boats to bully us. They do things very blatantly. This is overall a one bend, one road. This is one of the communist China schemes. It covers 65 countries and 40% of the world GDP. Part of that, they use the old sink road. You remember the trade, the sink road for trading between China and Europe. And On top of that, you will see the region below here. On top of that, okay, it goes all the way to China, to Spain. And then they have the maritime road, which goes all the way from China, down here, down here, down here, and to form one way, one road. That is, that is the latest scheme. Today, they make an announcement. Okay. They are not going to use the uh, nine dashes anymore to control the South China Sea and within that group. They just combine that they use another name which means the same thing. This is very important for China. We need to defeat them on, on this. We need to align with the countries on the bend on the road. So some protest pictures against China, you we see this from all over the world. This one is probably from Turkey or maybe the Philippines. Yeah. This is the protest against China and their president Xi Jinping right there. Yeah. If you are concerned of Putin. This guy is much more dangerous. Okay, Putin, we cannot do much at nowadays. We have pretty much boxed him in. But this guy is earning a mock. And he's dangerous. Same thing. Protest against him, against China. This is in the, the Philippines. This is the disdain for China. Again, this is probably in Turkey. Okay. Then next is the threat to Africa. Okay. Again, they are private corrupt leaders in Africa. And there are many corrupt leaders. And they are buying business land and land in, in Africa. And again, just like in Asia, they have long term leases, 50 years, 99 years, to send the Chinese people there to occupy the land. Sometimes a town, sometimes a whole district, sometimes part of a province. And they have, through corrupt leaders, where, which own the pride, they have exclusive rights to export natural resources, oil, gas, and minimum rights, precious rights, precious minimum rights. And they are doing that in Africa. The next slide will show you the influence in Africa.
if you if we look at this carefully you see where the countries with dark blue where more than 80 percent of the people think positively of China and this is serious for Africa more than 80 percent okay they are making inroads into Africa many African countries <coughs> note there are still white countries where they don't have a presence yet I was told a story about Somalia early on many years ago when the Chinese came into Somalia the Malay the Somalian people seek the Chinese out and kill them right. so that there are not, not, too, not many Chinese in Somalia so to me the Somalian like the Irish people like the Vietnamese people and many other people in the world all those people will never accept foreign domination This is a picture of Chinese teaching Chinese to African people. Two thousand years ago, when China occupied Vietnam for one thousand years, except for a few short years, they also forced the Vietnamese people at that time to study Chinese, write Chinese. Uh, read Chinese, write Chinese, look Chinese. <coughs> if the Vietnamese people spoke Vietnamese, they are punished. They are doing the same thing in Africa. They would have the school to teach Chinese language in Africa, if not already. Chinese workers in, China, in, in Africa Threat to Latin America. They are doing the same thing like they are doing in other continents. When I went to Latin America a few years ago, I see Chinese everywhere. They have a strong presence there. And you don't see a lot of Chinese cars in here. The Chinese cars people because they are cheap people in Latin America have bought them but they don't have the regulations like we do in this country right? they don't record cars like we do okay so many of these cars are unsafe and the corrupt government just let things go by and of course they have toxic products in Latin America too we have a history of Panama children. One time there were 370 children from Panama dead because of toxic cough syrup made in China. The cough syrup made in China contains uh, diethylene glycol which caused death at one time to 375 children from Panama <coughs> this is an example where they destroy the environment in Latin America So, in conclusion, I need your help to make Americans become aware of the Chinese threat. It's serious, it's here, and it would affect our future considerably. We also, I also need you to make the government be aware of that threat too, and to take it seriously. 
As I mentioned, China is our number one enemy. Not Russia anymore, but China. We need an effective strategy to contain China. I don't know whether many of you have heard about George Cannon. Okay, for those of you who don't know about him, George Cannon was an American diplomat around 1920. He worked for our State Department and he was in the Soviet Union many years. And during that time, he wrote a very long memo back to the State Department. In that, he developed a whole strategy on how to contain the Soviet Union and our government, both Republicans both Republican administration and Democratic administration follow his blueprint to the letter. Without the risk of nuclear war in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. And after 70 years, we won the Cold War, thanks to George Kennedy. I hope that somewhere in our government there is another George Kennedy to contain China, and I'm sure there would be. We should ally with the nation on the one bend, one road against Chinese world domination plot. We want to make Americans aware of the danger from China. To me, I don't see that happening a lot. Okay, so I need you to talk to your friends, relatives, families, and so on to emphasize the danger of China. I saw one on TV that an American, a very good American, who watched something from Best Buy. And the television crew asked that person why he bought that. And the answer was that because it's cheap. And then he was asked whether he knew who made that. And he didn't know. And the comment zoomed in a label on the product made in China. Okay. We are helping China destroy our manufacturing base with that. We should buy American and boycott the Chinese product. Myself. Personally, I've, my family and myself own everything to this country. And things that we can do, we buy American. The, the cars, and I've been in this country for 40 years, all the cars that I buy, and they're Americans, American made. We try to even buy very few Chinese food. Now, in my mind, China has three major drawbacks that many people don't know, especially the folks too. <coughs> it has a repressive regime, not like us. And the second is not so obvious to many people, is that both the people of China and the communist leadership of China, they have a feudal mentality. If they don't have, if China doesn't have those two drawbacks, I would be very, very, very worried about their intention and their goals. But I think these two drawbacks would cause, would limit them and cause their downfall will allow us to contain them. These are two very, very key factors. And of course, China represents everything against our value, our human rights value, our human dignity value, our freedom, freedom to choose our own destiny. 
to over ourselves, to be free from repressive regime, from dictatorship. These are the values that we hold highly and we always abide by them. Once again, I want to thank you for coming here and being patient and listening to me. I hope that I have conveyed a message and I hope you will convey that message to your friends, your relatives, your co-workers, your colleagues, etc. to make sure that most Americans become aware of the Chinese threat and our administration too. Thank you for having me here tonight.